as of now, in our discussion on capacitors and RC circuits, we essentially saw that we can use an RC circuit to essentially charge a capacitor. So let's see exactly what we mean by looking at the following two diagrams. So in diagram A, we essentially have an open RC electric circuit. So we have a resistor, we have a capacitor, and we have a battery, which is our voltage source. Now notice our circuit is open, so our capacitor will not be charged because electrons will not flow inside an open circuit. Now, let's suppose we take this switch and we close our switch. At that moment, electrons will begin to flow from the lower potential side of our battery to this side, this plate of our capacitor. Our electrons will begin to collect on this plate of our capacitor and that collection of electric charge, of negative electric charge, will push the electrons on this side, on this plate away and those electrons will travel into this plate of our battery. Now eventually, after some time, this capacitor will be fully charged. And at that moment in time, the voltage across our capacitor will be equal to the voltage across our battery. And in that moment, electrons will stop flowing, so no electric current will exist in this circuit when this capacitor has the same voltage as this battery. So when our capacitor is fully charged. So this is how we use RC circuits to charge our capacitors. Now let's discuss discharging of our capacitors. Let's suppose once the capacitor is fully charged, we take our battery and we remove our battery. So once we remove our battery, once again we have an electric potential difference, a voltage difference that will exist within our circuit and electrons will begin to flow from this side of our capacitor to the other side of our capacitor via the following closed electric circuit. So, this is called discharging of our capacitor. Now, as electrons begin to flow, as electrons begin to leave this plate and end up on this plate, the quantity of separation of electric charge will begin to decrease. And because our capacitor over time will have less charge, the voltage difference across our capacitor over time will also begin to decrease. So, if we use Kirchhoff's second rule, which essentially tells us the sum of the voltages across any closed loop within our RC circuit is equal to zero, we'll see that the equation for the voltage across our capacitor and across our resistor is given by the following equation. So the voltage across our resistor and the voltage across our capacitor at any given moment in time are exactly the same. So I multiplied by R, the voltage across our resistor during discharge is equal to Q divided by C, the voltage across our capacitor. So this equation comes from Kirchhoff's second rule. So, we just said during discharge of our capacitor, the voltage drops and the quantity of charge stored on our capacitor also drops over time. So, let's try to develop an equation for voltage and charge with respect to time. So, since the rate at which our charge leaves our capacitor is given by I is equal to negative dq divided by dt by definition of instantaneous current, we see that our I in this equation can be represented by negative dq divided by dt. So this is simply the quantity of charge that leaves our capacitor with respect to time. So this multiplied by R is equal to Q divided by C, where Q is the quantity of 
charge and C is our capacitance of the capacitor. Now, if we rearrange our equation and bring the Q's to this side and everything else to the other side, we get the following result. Negative DQ divided by Q is equal to DT divided by RC. Now we want to integrate both sides and we integrate from T equals zero when our charge on the capacitor initially is given to be Q naught to a time given by T when the quantity of charge at time T is equal to Q. So we integrate the left and the right side of this equation and we get the following result. So negative of the integral from Q naught to Q of dQ divided by Q is equal to the positive integral from 0 to T dT divided by RC. So this simply becomes negative natural log of Q from Q naught to Q and this becomes positive T divided by RC from 0 to T. So now we are ready to evaluate our integral and we get the following result. So natural log of Q naught minus natural log of Q is equal to T divided by RC. Where once again Q naught is our initial quantity of charge right when the discharging takes place. Q is our final quantity of charge at some time T. T is our time, R is our resistance, and C is our capacitance. So let's apply the laws of logs and combine this side, we get the following quantity. Now, let's multiply both sides by negative 1 and we get the following result. So our negative disappears because we flipped this ratio. So natural log of Q divided by Q naught is equal to negative T divided by RC. Now we take the exponential of both of these sides. So uh, notice when we take the exponential of a natural log, it disappears and we simply have the ratio Q divided by Q naught and this becomes our e to the power of negative T divided by RC. So now let's bring Q naught to the right side and we get the following equation. So the quantity of charge left on the capacitor after T set seconds during our discharge is given by the following equation. So Q, the quantity of charge left on the capacitor, is equal to the initial quantity of charge at T equals 0 seconds given by Q naught multiplied by E to the power of negative T divided by RC, where RC is known as the time constant. So. Now let's take this equation and let's use this equation to calculate what the voltage difference is across our capacitor after some time given by T. So because the quantity of charge on our capacitor is equal to the product of the capacitance and the voltage across that capacitor at that given moment in time, because we have this equation, we can essentially take the Q and replace the Q with simply our C multiplied by VC. Then if we divide both sides by C, we get the following result. The voltage across our capacitor at any given moment in time is equal to Q naught divided by the capacitance multiplied by E to the power of negative T divided by RC. Now because Q naught divided by C is simply equal to the initial voltage across our capacitor given by V naught, we can simply replace this ratio with V naught, where V naught is the initial voltage right when our discharge begins to take place at time equals zero seconds. So the voltage that exists across our capacitor after T seconds during discharge is given by the product of V naught and E to the power of negative T divided by R multiplied by C. Now, if we take this equation and we take the derivative of both sides with respect to time, we see that dQ divided by dt is equal to negative of i, where i is our instantaneous electric current in our circuit. So this is equal to, we take this side and take the derivative of it with respect to time, 
and we get negative Q naught multiplied by E to the power of negative T divided by RC divided by RC. So because this is negative and this negative, we can multiply these two sides by negative 1 and we get the following equation. So I is equal to the instantaneous electric current in our circuit during discharge is equal to Q naught divided by R multiplied by C which is simply I naught multiplied by E to the power of negative T divided by RC. So this gives us our electric current in our RC circuit during discharge. So we see when the capacitor is discharging, the quantity of decrease in our voltage, in our electric current, and in our quantity of charge is exponential. So it decreases exponentially with respect to time.